Welcome to day 12 for chapter 5, which is section 6, the quadratic formula and the discriminant. You will notice for today's video you need no calculator. There are two objectives. First, we are going to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. I'm sure you learned this in Algebra 1 and you possibly went over it in Geometry. Then, something new is we're going to use the discriminant to determine the number and type of roots of an equation. So in order to solve quadratics, remember quadratics are equations that have x squared as your highest power, we have three methods that we've learned so far. We learned to solve by graphing, we learned to solve by factoring, and then throughout you've learned to use the square root method. All of these are very effective ways to solve a quadratic equation. But what happens when you're not, when you don't have a calculator and you can't factor or use the square root method? So what happens with quadratics that don't factor, they don't have, you can't take square root and you don't have a calculator? In those cases, you're going to use what's called the quadratic formula. So I'm sure you have learned this before, but this is the one that says that x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So when do you use this? When you cannot factor or take a square root and when you are not allowed to use a calculator. So let's look at a few examples. Looking at example number one. I told you you can't use a calculator. You cannot take a square root here because you have both an x squared and an x. So let's see if this factors. If I multiply 2 and 5, I get 10. So two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to be 8. Well, as you can probably guess, there are not two of those numbers. So this is not going to factor. So our only option is the square root method. Or not the square root, is the quadratic formula. Sorry, I misspoke. Our only option is the quadratic formula. So I'm going to zoom in so we have more room to work. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite quadratic formula is the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So first thing is what's my a, b, and c? a is what's in front of the x squared, which is 2 in this case. b is the coefficient of x, which is 8, and c is the constant term. It's the term that doesn't have an x, which is 5. So let's start plugging in. I get negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So this becomes negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus, now 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40, all over 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, order of operations. I can't just start simplifying however I want. Remember that the order of operations is PEMDAS. So I have to start with whatever's in parentheses. Now we don't have parentheses written, but there's understood to be parentheses underneath the square root. That's why I started under the square root. So 64 minus 40 is going to be 24. So I have negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 24 all over 4. Okay, I don't have any exponents. I do have multiplying or dividing. Now remember that the numerator is again understood to be in parentheses. So I need to simplify that first. I cannot take negative 8 and add or subtract it to root 24 because those are not like terms. So I have to simplify the root 24. Root 24 is root 4 and root 6. 4 is 2 times 2 and 6 is 2 times 3. So I have a pair of 2's here. One of the 2's from the pairs comes out. That 2 and the 3 stays under the root as a 6. So this becomes negative 8 plus or minus 2 root 6 over 4. Now I have one more simplifying step. In order to do the division, I look at the negative 8, the 2, and the 4. And I think, can I simplify those at all? Is there any common factor I can divide out of all of them? Well, hopefully you know that they're all divisible by 2. So if I divide everything by 2, I get negative 4 plus or minus 1 root 6, which is just root 6, all over 2. 
Now here are my two answers. Now mind you, this is two answers. This is negative four plus root six all over two and negative four minus root six all over two. So it's two different answers. Okay, I know this looks like a lot of work, but it is very helpful. The quadratic formula will solve any quadratic. Quadratics where you don't have a calculator, where they don't factor, where you can't take a square root. This will always work. So let's look at another example. Okay, example number two says x squared plus 20 equals negative 7x. Now what's different, you're going to notice, is that this is not set equal to zero. You always have to have your quadratic, quadratic set equal to zero first. So make sure you write that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add that 7x. So I have x squared plus 7x plus 20 equals zero. Now I can do the quadratic formula. First, I just like to check, um, I can't take square root, and I just like to check that it's not factorable. So two numbers that multiply to 20 and add to be seven, well, there's no two numbers like that, so we are gonna have to use the quadratic formula. So first thing is, what's a, b, and c? a is the coefficient in front of x squared. There's nothing written, so that's understood to be a one. B is the coefficient in front of x, which in this case is a 7. And C is my constant. It's my term that doesn't have an x, which is 20. So I'm going to write the quadratic formula. It's just a good practice before I start substituting numbers in. So I have negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2A. Okay, now order of operations. I have to do what's in those parentheses first. So again, there's not really parentheses, but they're understood to be there. This is negative seven plus or minus. Seven squared is 49. Four times one times 20 is 80. Got to keep simplifying what's under that square root. 49 minus 80 is negative 31. Okay, now before I can simplify any further, I have to, or before I start dividing, that is, I need to simplify the square root. So the square root of negative 31, there's no factors that I can take out, but there is an i since it's a negative. So this becomes i root 31. Because remember, we don't like the negative under the root. Now in order to simplify further, I look at the negative 7, the i, and the 2. Is there any common factor I can divide out of all of them? Well, the largest common factor is one, so I can't simplify this any further. So my answer is negative seven plus or minus i root 31 all over two. And remember, this gives you two answers. This gives you negative seven plus i root 31 over two and negative seven minus i root 31 over two. Now it's time for you to try one on your own. Here's an example three. This is the one that you are going to try. Make sure you start by isolating um, the equation, so by getting everything on one side. So I guess not really isolating. Make sure you move everything to one side and have it set equal to zero before you start. Pause the video, try it on your own, and come back when you are finished, please. First thing that you should have done is subtract that 7. Ooh, sorry, I didn't mean to move the page. So we have 2x squared plus 7x minus, plus 6x minus 7 equals 0. Your a is 2, your b is 6, and your c is negative 7. Substituting into the quadratic formula, you get the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this becomes negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36. Okay, here's where I would bet you made a mistake if you did. I have a negative 4 and a negative 7. So 4 times 2 is 8, times 7 is 56. Because I have a negative and negative, that becomes a positive 56. 
please make sure you have that as a positive 56 and not a negative. If you got that to be positive, good job. So this is negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 92 all over 4. Now from here, you had to simplify that root 92. So you probably don't know those factors right off the top of your head, but you should have known that 2 goes in. That's 2 times 46, and 46 is 2 times 23. So I have a pair of 2s and a 23 left over. This is negative 6 plus or minus 2 root 23 all over 4. Now to simplify, I have a negative 6, a 2, and a 4. I can divide everything by 2. This becomes negative 3 plus or minus 1 root 23, or just root 23, all over 2. If you got that right, great job. If you made a mistake, that's okay. We're going to practice more tomorrow. That was the quadratic formula. It's used in one of two ways. It's used, firstly, to solve quadratic equations, which is what we've been doing. Specifically, we use the discriminant, though. So please flip the page, and we're going to talk about the discriminant. Okay, so the discriminant is the part b squared minus 4ac. So it's the part under the root. It tells us the number and type of roots or solutions. So this is how we're going to be using the discriminant. I'm going to give you a quadratic and ask you how many solutions are there and what type of solutions are there. You're going to answer that using the discriminant. So looking at this table, the left side is the value of the discriminant. So the discriminant can be positive, so it can be greater than zero. It can be less than zero, so it can be negative. Or it can be equal to zero. If your discriminant is positive, you have two real solutions. So looking at a graph, that would be a graph like this that has one solution here and one solution here. It crosses your x-axis twice. If your discriminant is negative, you have two imaginary solutions. So that would be a graph like this. No real solutions. It doesn't cross the x-axis. If your discriminant is exactly zero, you have one real solution. So that would be a graph like this that rests on the x-axis. It only has one solution, one place that it crosses the x-axis. So let's do an example like this. Example number four says calculate the value of the discriminant, then determine the number and type of roots. So before we do that, we have a quick trivia question. Who is the only president to have died before his parents? So while we're doing this problem, think about that. Okay, so calculate the value of the discriminant. So we just said the discriminant is the b squared minus 4ac part. I know my a is 7, my b is negative 11, and my c is 5. So I have negative 11 squared minus 4 times 7 times 5. This is 121 minus 4 times 7 is 28. 28 times 5 is 140. 120 minus 40 is negative 19. So my discriminant is negative 19. This tells me I have 2 imaginary solutions. So returning to our trivia question, who was the only president to have died before his parents? Well, that was JFK. John F. Kennedy was the only president that died before his parents. We have one last example to do, and that's example number five. You have to calculate the value of the discriminant and determine the number and type of roots. Again, one thing I forgot to mention is that your quadratic always has to be set equal to zero before you can calculate the discriminant, similar to the quadratic formula. First thing that I'm going to tell you is you should probably reorder so that you have x squared, then x, then the constant. So right now, pause the video and try this example on your own, please. Come back when you are finished.
Okay, you should have taken a chance to try this one on your own. I'm not showing you any work, but I am telling you the discriminant you should have gotten is 289, which tells you that there are two real solutions or two real roots. If you did not get that, please make sure you go back and find your mistake. When you come to class tomorrow, we will be checking to see that you have all notes, the correct answer for number five, and the work. If you have any questions, please make sure you bring them to class tomorrow.